Today I want to talk to you about wire gauge and what is acceptable and maximum for your particular size of wire you're using for your solar panels to your charge controller and where to find the information to make sure you're not exceeding safe limits and how to calculate it. I'll include uh, links in my description and also on the cards up above as we go through this. Uh, it might be easier to finish watching the video before you go check these links or you lose your place. And as always, if I'm helpful or you find this uh, information good, please subscribe, like, share. The system I'm running right now, I have uh, two charge controllers and two systems. The first charge controller is a Renault G Tracer 4210RN. It's 40 amp. Its limits are 400 watt input. My battery bank is four 80 amp hour lead acid batteries for a total of 320 amp hours. I have four 100 watt Renogy G solar panels in series parallel. So we're putting out six or 10.6 amps at 37.8 volts. That's approximately 25 amps at 14 volts after it goes through its MPPT uh, exchange there for the boost. My second system is three 100 watt uh, Renault G. So that's putting out uh, 3.5 amps each and we are in parallel so that's just stacking on the amps so that's times three 15.9 amps at 18.9 volts so that's going to go down to a PWM uh, go power at uh, it's a max maximum is uh, 30 amp and so we're pretty we're only about half of its capacity. My issue is when I park my trailer for the winter storage, I don't have any uh, charge capacity going to my battery bank number one. And I've only got uh, 5.3 amps going to battery bank number two if I tilt it. I've got tilting mounts. When I set this up, uh, oh, this is because I'm my parking space for my trailer. This is the southern exposure. In order to maximize my southern exposure charging and try to get more sun to my battery bank one, I'm going to add one more 100 watt panel plus one 175 watt panel. And that's going to change up where these are going to feed. No longer am I going to be tying this, this 100 watt panel with these other two for battery bank two. I'm going to use this one plus this other 100 watt in series. And then come in with these other four that are already existing that are in series parallel. So that's going to be 15.9 amps at 37.8 volts, 600 watts total. My other battery bank two, I'll still be using these 200 watt panels plus the 175 watt panel at 9.5 amps for a total of 20.1 amps at 18.8 volts. So my concern is, is my number 10 
gauge wire going to be safe and even efficient at all to transfer that power to my charge controller from the roof. So I looked at uh, various wiring charts to see what exactly that was going to do and how it's going to work out for me. I looked at the deep or the blue sea website and I found that 15 feet of wire for with only a 3% voltage drop for my uh, 15 amps and it says I'm I'm pretty dang safe with that so that was that was what I was after but what about when I go up to the 20 amps and which I'm going to be doing now with these three panels and the addition the addition of the 175 watt so that's 20.1 amps at 18 volts 18.8 so, 15 feet says I'm still good, but that's a pretty vague chart for me. So I went and I found another chart, and this is at uh, calculator.net. I'm going to include a link for that, and a panel up above my head, or on the top of right about here. Click on that, it'll also be in the description. So on this, I'm able to select my wire, select my wire size, what my voltage is from the panel, DC wire, single set of conductors, and the distance. And so I selected my 15 feet and my 20 amps. That shows up that I'm uh, going to have a voltage drop percentage of 3.21. So I'm going to lose 0.6 volts. That's pretty sweet. I'm in a pretty sweet spot with that. And then uh, at the output of that from the 18.7, I'm, I'm still going to be at 18.1. That's a pretty good deal. Let's go over to my other battery bank, my new one. Voltage drop for my 600 watt in series parallel so that bumps up my voltage to 37.8 well gosh that's pretty nice I only have a voltage drop of 1.27 so I'm still shooting out 37 uh, point two uh, voltage on that so what a great tool this is uh, you don't even have to guess and you don't have to you can put your exact numbers in there and be good. As you can see though, now I'm going to be maxed out my Renogy charge controller, the, the Tracer 4210, because its maximum uh, wattage is 400. So I, I'm getting a new EP Ever Tracer 4215BN its maximum watts is 520 well I'm putting out 600 why would I do that I've already got an undersized controller well I've got AC here and I've got an AC here and I got a bathroom vent and in the winter it's not going to be an issue because I'm only going to have 200 watts tilted facing up these other 400 are most likely going to be covered in snow but even if they aren't, they're tipped away from the sun. So these are not going to be an issue at all. Summertime, I'm going to be banking on my AC shading one side or the other. We're just going to have to see if I'm going to run into a problem. If I do, well, I will let you know. I'm certainly going to do some testing and further videos and we'll see what that looks like. So if you know of a video or know somebody that's had issue with running 600 watts through 
either one of these charge controllers. I know I've seen people run 600 watts even through the uh, the old Reno G 40 amp. I don't understand how you can call it a 40 amp output if you can't put enough watts into it to make 40 amps. Anyway, we're going to include some links to the install of the old system and uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, in the comments give me any insights you might have that I'm, I might be missing something here. Thanks for watching.